Well, good day. Welcome to this YouTube channel. We thank you for tuning in and God bless each and every one of you. Shout out today to the First Lady, to my granddaughters, Mariah and Faith. We love you, we love you, we love you. To my family and my wonderful church family, we love you with the love of God. We want to share with you today a brief message that will help us kind of ref not only reflect on where we are, but how we got to where we are. Turn with me to Psalms 124. Psalms 124, verses 1 through 8. Psalms 124, verse 1 through 8. From the NIV translation, If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept us over. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I want to talk to you from this thought. The Lord is our help. The Lord is our help. This psalm, which has been credited to David, is a song that is believed by many to have been sung by the children of Israel coming out of Babylonian captivity. We see David leading Israel in giving thanks to God for past help and expressing confidence in his continued help. Let me pause here to say to all of you present, either here on site or those who are present virtually, that we ought to give the Lord thanks for what he has done, for what he is doing, and for what he still have yet to do. This psalm teaches us that God is the author of all our deliverances. He must have the glory. This psalm teaches us that the enemy lays snares and traps for us to bring us into subjection and seduce us into sin and to trouble and to hold us bondage. But praise be to God, the Lord is our help. It's been one year since we shut down businesses, schools, and even indoor worship because of COVID-19. It's been demanding, texting, and challenging. It's been difficult, brutal, and downright hard. It's been arduous, burdensome, and grueling. We were unable to be around the ones we love, unable to enjoy the things we enjoy, unable to gather to see one another as the body of Christ. If you agree with me, Somebody ought to say amen. I can't speak for any of you, but I know that I did not, as a leader, make all the right decisions. I know I did not respond to some as they believed I should have responded. It was not because I was uncaring or unthoughtful. But like many of you, I was battling and trying to make sense of what was going on. Unlike many in the world who have not experienced the impact of COVID-19 firsthand, I am one of the many that has. Just imagine trying to get medical attention and they direct you to the emergency room only for the emergency room to take your temperature and suggest that you go home and manage the best way you can. That was hurtful and stressful. To then get a phone call 
saying your mother-in-law's condition is worsening while she's at home. Rushing to pick her up and get her to the place that you were told you did not want to be. As I watched her walk through the ER doors, I said a prayer and said, Lord, I place it in your hands. But then the medical personnel said these words, go home. There's nothing more you can do. Then to return to emergency a couple of days later and watch your wife in tears because we've been told yet again by the medical team that you did not want to come in the hospital. As to suggest that the moment you walk through the door, you were not going to walk out again. That was stressful and hurtful. Then on top of that, to be discharged and told that you had to distance yourself under your own rooftop became a great challenge and discomfort for us. What more could come, I asked, as a minister of the most righteous God, to not be by the side of our New Liberty family and my personal family in their time of need was hurtful to me. To all the New Liberty families who continue to grieve and work through their grieving process, I am still praying with you and praying for you. I am not in your shoes, but I can only imagine the struggle that you have had and that you are still having. To not be at the side of your loved one in a moment that you felt they needed you the most was disheartening and downright discouraging. But as I reflected back on these moments after one year, I can say without hesitation, the Lord was our help. Things may not have turned out as we had wished. They may not have turned out as we wanted. But I can say the Lord is our help. COVID-19 brought its share of problems and challenges. Emotional challenges, health challenges, financial challenges, relational challenges. But I can say with certainty the Lord is and has been our help. Even as I speak right now. There's someone dealing and coping with pain, coping with an issue, or coping with a concern. Someone's trying to work through some obstacles that have been placed in your life right now. Someone is trying to make sense of what's going on to you and around you. But I'll say it again in the loudest voice possible. The Lord is I help. Let us look at the text today and be witnesses to the testimony of how the Lord is our help. Look at verse 1. Verse 1 said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. If the Lord had not been on our side, all would be lost. If the Lord had not been on our side. All would not be as they are now. If the Lord had not been on our side, all would be a total chaos. But thank the Lord that he was and that he still is on our side. If you had to endure the transition of a loved one, it hurts. But the Lord is still on your side. He has brought you to this place, my brothers and sisters, this day. Yes, your heart may still be heavy, but the Lord has given you strength to keep on moving on. Some have not had the food that they desire to eat, but thank God you've not gone hungry. Why? The Lord is on your side. In fact, let me pause again. To thank all of those who went out of their way and exposed themselves to this treacherous virus. To make sure that the things that was needed at my house was there. Boxes of food and paper goods and cleaning supplies were left at my front door. 
You just don't know how much that was appreciated. Not having to drive store to store in search of items in short supply. As well as trying to maintain and take care of individuals recovering from COVID-19. And the greater blessing was, though you didn't have to do it, you thought enough for myself and my family to see about our needs. What a wonderful blessing. And it lets me know that the Lord is on our side. Look at verse 2. Verse 2 repeats the words in verse 1. If the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us. When the Lord, if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us. If the Lord had not been on our sides when the virus attacked us. When, if the Lord had not been on our side when unemployment attacked us. If the Lord had not been on our side when negativity attacked us. If the Lord had not been on our side when there were those who didn't believe the virus to be real, to continue to do their own thing. If the Lord had not been on our side, we would be most miserable. But I want you to know today, it's all right to repeat yourself. It's all right to repeat the things that you've already said when it concerns the Lord. Repeating the verse should always serve as a reminder that it's okay to give God praise. That's when I hear folks say, thank you, Jesus. And they say it again, it's all right with me. When they say, thank you, Jesus, again, and they repeat themselves again, it's all right with me. Thank you, Jesus. Let's the Lord know how grateful you are. Thank you, Jesus. Let's him know again just how much you appreciate him. Thank you again. Let's him know how much praise that you have for him. Thank you again. Let's him know how grateful that you are. I know that he's not hard of hearing, but repetitive sometimes is a way of testifying. To the Lord and to others. How good that the Lord is. And that the Lord is on your side. Look at verses 3, 4, and 5. They would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Thank God we have not been swallowed alive by our enemies that flared up during this season of pandemic. The enemy of sickness, the enemy of despair, the enemy of doubt, the enemy of unconcern, the enemy of defeat, and the enemy of withdrawal, and many more that were hiding among the bushes. We were not swallowed up to the point that we did not continue to move forward. We were not swallowed up to the point we said no one else cares, so why should I? We were not swallowed up to the point where we said there's no need to keep on fighting. We kept getting up out of bed. We kept going about our day. We kept striving through life. Not because we were strong, but because the Lord was strong for us. Not because we were smart, but because the Lord was smart for us. Not because we figured it out, but because the Lord had already worked it out. But notice the Psalms makes a transition in verses 6 and 7. Verse 6 and 7 makes a transition from giving God thanks for being on our side. To praising the Lord for who he is. Verse 6 says, praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. Verse 7 says, we have escaped like a bird from the fowler snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. I cannot explain it, nor will I try. But somewhere in the midst of giving God thanks, our thanks turns into praise. I believe that we transition from recognizing what the Lord has done to recognizing that he's the Lord all by himself. Anybody have a praise today? Not just for what he has done, but for who he is. Not from where he bought you, but for who he is. 
not for the roof over your head only, but for who he is. And all I can do in my praise is say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. You are worthy of all praise. Why? Because you're mighty yeah, and you're wonderful. You're glorious and you're awesome. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Awesome in what he does. Awesome in where he's brought us. Awesome in his love towards us that he sent his only begotten son just for us. Awesome that when you couldn't and wouldn't love yourself, he loved you. Awesome that when you thought you weren't worth it, the Lord thought you were worth it. Awesome in his mercy and awesome in his grace. What an awesome God we serve. Then finally, there's verse 8. Verse 8 says, Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. In today's culture, names seem not to carry the meaning that they once did. But when you look at the names of the Lord, there is help right in his name. They may not make sense to you or you may not even care. But I'm glad to know the Lord has many names and there's meaning in his names. He's Elohim, God, creator, mighty and strong. When I need strength, I need to be with somebody who's strong. I'm glad he's named El Shaddai, God Almighty. I don't need someone that's not mighty and can fight all my battles, but he's almighty. He's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. I know he will provide. He's been providing for me for many, many years, and he's been providing for many others. That's why I can say, I thank you, Lord, for being my provider. There's hope in his name. He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. He can heal your body. He can heal your soul. He can heal your mind. He can heal your spirit. He is Jehovah Nasi. The Lord is our banner. I want you to know he's Emmanuel. God with us. He's the way maker. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last. He is the good shepherd. He's the living bread. He's the wonderful counselor, everlasting father, salvation, and the lamb of God. Jesus is our help today. Lean on him with all that you have. Stop trusting in yourself because the Lord is our help. You can't do it. You can't fix it. You can't make it right. The Lord is our help. He's a help in the time of need. All you got to do is look to him. He is your help. Stop looking at your circumstance and look to the Lord. Stop trying to work it out because he's already worked it out. Stop trying to make it right because you can't make it right. You need to recognize that the Lord is a helper. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how much the struggle is discouraging to you right now, the Lord is a helper. Trust in Him. He will make a way. I'm a witness today. The Lord will make a way. He'll make a way for you just like He did for me. If only you trust in Him. Because the Lord is our help. He's our help, I tell you. He's our help. He's our help when we want it, and He's our help when we need it. He's our help in our dark days and in our sunshine day. He is our help, I tell you, if you trusted Him. The Lord is our help. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. May He go with you each and step, every step of the way. Well, if you tune in today and you want to submit yourself to the Lord that we've been talking about, I want to invite you to come to know Him by just praying this prayer with me. Would you do that? Close your eyes, if you will, and pray this prayer. Father, in your name, I submit my life to you, a sinner. I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. 
and I give my sins and my life to you. Allow me to grow closer to you that I might know more about you and share with others how good you are. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer and you have believed wholeheartedly that God has saved you, you have become part of the family of God. Let me encourage you to become part of a Bible-believing church where you can learn more about God and who He is, but more importantly, where you could be a witness to others that God is our hope and that He will provide. With that being said, God keep you and God bless you until the next time. Peace.